Welcome back to the channel. This is the place where we explore software development, we dive into exciting technologies, and learn how to build amazing projects together. By the way, if you're new here, I'd love to have you join this growing community of passionate developers. Just hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss out on the latest tutorials, tips, and coding fun. It is free and it really helps support this channel. All right, let's dive straight into today's session. Welcome back. In this video, our aim is to set up OpenAPI using Spring Boot. You'd all agree with me that it is good to have good documentation when it comes to an API or microservices, right? So in this video, would focus solely on making sure that we have documentation using OpenAPI or Swagger, right? Let's get right into it. Let's first start by creating our, let's just create a new application, right? Let's create a new project and let's just name this um, Swagger API, right? That works. Um, I'm okay with where it's at, the directory. So we're using Maven be sure we're using maven and then the name is swagger api um we're using java 21 let's just use the latest 23 as of now 23 seems to be the latest the next and we need um, we're using spring boot 3.3.5 no problem so we need um, some dependencies one of them is the web all right let's just put in spring web um let us also add one more thing right let's just assume we're working with an application that has um, security added to it, um, the Spring Security, right? So let's just put in Spring Security, right? Let's add that, okay? Now let's create the project, all right? Awesome. The project is created. Good. Now for Open API, let's add the dependency for Open API, right? The dependency we need is the Open API. Let's just type that um spring dog so let us use the web mvc ui spring dog um, awesome then let's just use the latest version no issues all right let's rebuild this project All right, so so let's just create a simple controller, right? Um, first of all, I want to create the package, all right? Then I just create the controller. This name is API controllers. That's fine. Good. Of course, we need our annotations, and one of them is the at rest controller. Let's use rest controller. Okay. Um, now let's just create assume that this is a public controller right so let's let's just put a get, get mapping on this one and then let's name it um say um api slash api slash let's name it public public okay all right so of course it's going to be a public um string public api let's let's just do that and then let's just return let's return public or this is a public api that works all right so let's just test this let's try this out and test this It says port 88 is, is being used so we can also we can always change the port no problems so changing the ports just go to here and change it to say 1990 doesn't really matter and let's try it again all right it started in 1990 all right let's now test it with our postman okay um local host 
and do not forget is HTTP. All right. So now, what is our path? What is our controller? Controller I was trying to call this one. And then unauthorized, which is correct because we have Spring Security in place. All right, so let's just clear that. Let's do that. All right, to fix the issue, right? The first thing we want to do, or the thing we want to do, is to create. Uh, let's create a security config, right? Um, let's just create the package called config, or maybe just security. That's fine. Whatever you want to name it. Um, then let's create a security config class. Okay. So first thing you want to do is add configuration. Again, we've done this previously in the previous um, series we had for how to create microservices, right? Um, we're just going to create something very simple. Let's create a bean. All right. Now um, we'll make it a public and then want to use a security filter. Um, secure really few touching this is what we want good and then um, the next thing is we then want to use that HTTP um, the first thing we want to do is the CSRF want to make sure that is disabled CSRF then we'll do um, the CSRF lambda the disabled good the next thing is we want to we want to declare our request endpoint right so here you want to do authorized HTTP request which is correct and then we want to do opt and authorization HTTP request dot request matcher which is fine so what do we want to allow here, right? Um, first of all, we want to allow, let's just allow number one, the endpoints for all the Swagger, right? All the Swagger endpoints that we know. At the top of my head, I know I have um, V3. Again, I'll add all this into descriptions, right? So docs. And then everything after it. Then again, let's just do um, Swagger UI Swagger. Okay, so this is giving me everything that I need, which is good. And then we want to permit all. Awesome. Then anything after that, we want to make sure they are authenticated, which is good. Okay. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to enable HTTP basics um, just to use username and password simply because we want to make it as simple as possible and as fast as possible. Then after that, we want to return our HTTP does build, which is good. Let's create another bean quickly. Um, this time around, we're creating a bean of password encoder. All right. And then we just want to return new bcrypt password encoder. That's fine. And let's create another bean here now because i'm using something basic right just something simple let's create another bin here and the bin i'm creating here will be for the in memory all right in memory in memory details user details manager good and then let's just name it yep yeah. and we want to use user details then user equals user.builder and then we want to set the username let's just give it a static username let's just call it user doesn't really matter whatever you call it and then let's create the password and let's just name it um, let's use the password in encryptor dot encode and then we want to put in our raw password right let's so let's do password okay now, do we want to set role? Let's just set role. Um, let's just set user, for example. And then we want to build this, okay? And then let's just do a return. Let's return the in-memory manager and the user. That's good. 
Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to create um, an open API configuration. So let's just create it here. Let's put it here. Let's name it config. And of course, we want to annotate it at configuration. And then what we want to do here at this point, you could define whatever you want, but let's just make it something basic. Um, let's make it that open API. And then we want to return a new open API. And then we want to set info, for example. Let's just set info, new info, all right? And then we want to set, say, for example, title. Title. Um, so whatever title you want to give it, say, ornate um, Spring Boot Swagger. Doesn't really matter, right? So. And the next thing you probably want to set is maybe version. Um, let's see version. You could just version 1.00. Doesn't really matter. Again, whatever you want. And then let's just add descriptions, right? Descriptions. A just name it whatever you want. Again, a demo project on Swagger, right? Good. All right. Let's just terminate this and then let's run. Let's rerun this. Let's restart this and let's test it. All right. It started on port 9090. Good. So let's just, so we'll do local host 9090 and then we want to do slash swagger UI and this. All right. So if you see, we are able to get our descriptions and our um, title descriptions and the likes, right? We're also able to find to get our endpoint. So if we test our endpoint from here, we could just click on try it out. And then you see this is a public um, API. So let's just try out, um, let's complete this by just completing the APIs, right? So let's create something like a private um, endpoint, right? So to create a private endpoint, we can just, um, again, let's just copy this, we could just copy this and then do private right so this is private api and then we can just say this is private and change the endpoint to private definitely right okay so let's restart this and bring up our swagger ui and just refresh this again if it started you will see both endpoints in there Good, so you have the private and the public endpoint, which is what we actually want, correct? So there are a lot of things you could do to this. You could just make sure that you are only able to access this using tokens. So there's a lot of configurations you could do. Um, so, but if you want me to make more configurations and you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section and I will attend to them accordingly, all right? But let's test this. Let's test this with using Postman, right? Um, let me just bring in my Postman. Um, here, so I have the public and of course I'm going to have 401 unauthorized simply because I'm not using my username and password. So to pass in my username and password, I go into basic auth and the username is user, remember, and the password is password. Right? And then, so if you try this, good. So you should have this is a public IP and the same thing if you try with the private, you should be able to get your data back, which is good. All right. I hope this has been helpful to you. All right. Once again, I'm super thrilled to be your instructor on this journey towards building excellence. Please subscribe, leave your comment, click the notification button to stay updated with our new videos, and most importantly, share with your friends. And I'll see you in the next video.